Hi guys, welcome to the Go Gallivanting Roller Team 747. Um, this one's aptly named because it's 7.47 metres long, but probably more importantly, it has a height clearance of 2.8 metres and a width of 2.3 metres. What I'm going to do is do your walk around video today to acquaint you with some of the key features to make your motorhome rental as smooth as a handover as we possibly can. So start from the driver's side. You can see we've got protective wing mirror covers, saves any unnecessary charges. Coming round to the left, we've got here the Truma boiler vent. There's a safety feature on this, which when this window's open, you can see there, there's a little sensor and that stops any carbon monoxide escaping from the vent back into the motorhome. So if your heating isn't working, that may well be the case. What we have on this particular model is we have some storage there. And also under here, you can just see here, this is the sump. It's currently in the open position and it is a, quite a stiff handle. What we often advise is when you get to a site, open the sump and leave it open because all that will really trickle out of it is your grey water from your shower and your washing up. Moving along, we see here, it's the cold water fill. So how to access that is via the habitation key. So your keys have a habitation key and they have a, a driver's key. Now the driver's key works everything from this point. So the cab and the habitation key works everything this side of the vehicle. So habitation key will open your water fill up and in the garage i'll show you shortly there is a hose pipe to be able to fill up on site um, next to that we've got the toilet cassette so i'll quickly show you how to operate the toilet cassette so you'll see a small blue lever here if you put one finger on it and push it up that will enable you to then just free up and remove the complete toilet cassette. When you get to your Elson point, it's just a simple case of turning the drain pipe, releasing the cap and pouring away any waste down your Elson point. And then there will be provided some some toilet liquid so what we actually do is we put it in there so once you've cleaned it if we put three caps full of the toilet fluid into this point here and put the cap back on bring it back to the motorhome and that will go and that will slide straight straight back in so when you hire the motorhome, it'll already have three caps full of the, the toilet cleaning fluid in it. So what we ask obviously is for that to be emptied when you return the motorhome back to us. Um, naturally, that's not a job that anybody wants to do. So we would appreciate you doing that for us. Thank you. Moving along, we have what we call the garage or what Fiat roller team call the garage. So these are activated by these two locking points here. Again, I've already discussed using the habitation key to be able to get into those. So they're locked on both sides. So if you unlock them, they just pop out. And what you'll find is when you turn them, you can just feel like there's a grommet either side. It just releases it. The catch here just enables you to hold the door up while you grab what you need. So in there, uh, there's various bits. So we do not supply bedding or towels with our hires, but what we do supply is 
uh, mattress toppers. So there's two super king size mattress toppers. There are some levelers, some wheel levelers if you're parked on a slope. We've got a camping table, a gas fire and chairs in the garage there currently. So to lock these, you push it in, turn these and you'll feel it bite. And then what we must do is make sure we turn both to lock and then push them in and they'll click. And they click shut. So that is locked. If you do not lock those and you take off down the road, be careful because obviously there's a danger. The garage could open up and you could end up with stuff strewn across the motorway, which we don't want. Coming around to the back of the vehicle then, we have a bike rack capable of accepting four bikes. Probably more importantly, from a driver's perspective, we have a reversing camera. If I show you the angle on the reversing camera, you'll notice it probably drops down at 25, 30 degrees. So in effect, it's not showing you the back of the camera and there are no sensors on the back. So it's not like a traditional car where the sensors will give you, you know, 30 centimeters or a feet to stop. So I always advise drivers to be mindful that the reversing camera probably gives you about four foot. Um, you do see the red, orange and green lines on the screen within the cab, the driver's cab. But again, guys, just be careful that that actually slopes on an angle, that camera. So when you're reversing, I, I always advise, try and have a banksman, have somebody to just watch you reverse because these are very easy to drive going forwards. Obviously a little bit more tricky when you start going the other way. Um, both sides, the garage is exactly the same. So I won't run you through that one. And as you come around here on the passenger side, this is the electric hookup. And what you'll see here is three pins. So all the hookup, so a 30 meter cable for the hookup when you get to site is in the garage and to disconnect the hookup, make sure you press that little lever there and it'll free it up and it'll pop out. You've got vents here for the gas boiler. And then I'll just, I'll skip the entrance there for now. We've got the LPG. So what we have on this vehicle is refillable liquid petroleum gas as opposed to propane gas. Excellent for when you're traveling abroad, a little bit more difficult finding sites in the UK, but we will supply you guys with a, a, a map for that. We'll always have two bottles and we operate a system whereby when you take the vehicle, there will always be one full bottle. So unless you're going on a long road trip, I don't think it's going to be something you guys will need to be concerned about, but that is a direct feel for those that, that are in the know in terms of LPGs and fill ups. So we have the capability for a direct LPG gas refill. As I say, two bottles, one will always be full. Um, if you're hiring for a week or, or a couple of weeks, we don't envisage that being an issue for you guys. Again, to lock any of the habitation area, turn the key and push the handle in. Now the vehicle is a diesel vehicle, which also has AdBlue. It's worth noting, we will ensure prior to hire, the AdBlue will always be full, as will a full tank of diesel when the vehicle is supplied. The only thing we ask, obviously, is to refill, like for like, the diesel tank when you return it. Don't worry about the AdBlue. That's one for us to deal with. So coming around to the front of the vehicle, just to give you a, a full 360, you can see pretty much there are absolutely no blemishes on this vehicle. It's our newest Lux model. And you can drive it away blemish free. 
I'll give you a quick show inside the driver's cab area. So we've got really nice leather seats. Now what we'll probably do there, a lot of people like to rent with dogs and such like, so we'll probably put some sheepskin seat covers on to protect the pristine nature of the leather. So from a driver's perspective, we have the multimedia center here, which has Bluetooth capability for phone. And also it has a sat nav reversing camera, which we've talked about before, which gives you the parking assistance. The vehicle is actually a six speed manual gearbox and it also has air conditioning and cruise control. Okay. So let's take a look inside your Lux motorhome rental. So we'll start with the dinette area. So we've just laid up a couple of plates, but this will actually seat four people comfortably. And what you have on this specific model is you have overhead stowage here now all of these handles on the vehicle open the same i'll do you a close-up they pull down you pull them down and then out they're all the same down and then out and what you'll find is you've got an abundance of storage which extends all the way to the kitchen and i'll go and take you and i'll show you so you've got one two three, four, five, six storage cupboards there as well. There are also two storage cupboards here. So you're not short of space on this specific model. So back to the dinette, we also have, on this vehicle, we have three sets of drawers. So they are just push in to open. and then push back into lock. Obviously, if you're gonna be doing long journeys, make sure you lock all of the cupboards and all of the drawers, guys. What you don't want is the contents of, of your belongings pouring out on the van. Nice feature on this specific model too is we've got a Bluetooth soundbar, which is rigged to the 24 inch TV. If you gently pull up the, the cupboard top, it's spring loaded and it'll bring the TV out. We've also got here your Wi-Fi router. So that will run 20 appliances. It will run the two TVs that are on the van. It will run the sat nav and any devices you bring with you on your holiday, guys. All the gubbins for it are up here. So all the remote controls for, for both TVs in, in the vehicle are in here. But the 24 inch TV in the dinette is actually 12 volt capable. You probably can't see it but down in there we have two 40 volt plugs and we also have a 12 volt plug in for it which means that when you are driving and if you've got your kids on a long journey they can be sat seat belted and watching tv whilst you travel to your destination i'll just show you how to operate the blinds you just pull it to one side you can feel it just release so obviously that brings the blinds down and that's the same same setup throughout. So you've also got three windows in the U-shaped lounge area. All three of those windows operate the same. So we have the dual, dual fly nets. Okay, and simultaneously you press both ends of those with two hands and that'll isolate the fly net. This one brings up the block out blinds. So middle one for block out blinds, far right and far left to isolate the fly net. And as I've just shown you before, you've just got the, the blinds which will drop down on a handle. Nice little feature on this specific model again is you have speakers in the back. When you're parked up, if you are playing music, you've either got the option of a soundbar or you, potentially you could play music through the cab that will then play into the back of the vehicle. Nice LED lighting, as you can see on this specific model, that runs throughout and is controlled via the panel here. 
I'll do a separate video for the panel, but just to show you, you have the main switch there for the LED lighting and the main on and off switch there for all of this panel. I'll keep the lighting on now for the purposes of, of showing you guys around the video. Uh, the kitchen area we have a we have a fridge so to open and lock the fridge two fingers in the two indentations press down and the fridge will open so the fridge actually has three power modes it will run on 240 volts it will run off the gas and it will also run off the 12 volt leisure battery so can be re replenished by the solar panels so at the minute the ignition's not on so when you're driving if you are going from a to b and you've got lots of food in your fridge basically you would have switched your gas off you're not hooked up so this is the one you need to select if you're going from a to b and you want all your perishable goods in the in the fridge area to be chilled um it will flash until you're driving because obviously it's running off the vehicle battery so let's put it on gas for now guys and you can actually hear the gas kicking in so the gas is taking care of power in the fridge and because it's not been on for a while you basically boost the power to five once that gets to the desired cool temperature you won't need it on as much you don't want to run out of gas so i'd suggest probably two would work We've also got a little storage compartment here. So because this specific model is very spacious at the back, the, tr the trade-off is the fridge isn't as big as some of the other motorhomes that are, uh, are out there. So what you have here is we put some ice packs in there. You have an area where you can store wine, beers, Coke, water. So in the floor, there's a nice little cool box built in. In terms of storage, we've got scope for a wardrobe in here. And we've also gone to the trouble of putting a, a Dyson Hoover in there. So if you're out with your dogs and um, they're anything like ours, you might need that one. All white goods cutlery is supplied and there is enough there for four people. So... What we've got in here, guys, is three different sized frying pans and three different sized saucepans. They work via this detachable, the or these detachable handles. Again, make sure you press the switch in when you close all your cupboards. So this is the roller team bathroom area. In terms of the toilet, what you have here on the toilet cartridge is you have a handle, so that will open. The slot for you to do your business. And when you're done, shut the slot, seat down, You'll need water on board to obviously operate the toilet because it's going to draw water and you'll need your, to put your water pump on. But there's the flush for the toilet there. Additional storage, light switch, pinch down. There's some additional storage for any bathroom essentials. And how the bathroom works, guys, is this actually pulls out. So to have a shower, you pull that all the way out um, and actually this will unclip so it gives you a, a waterproof door that folds all the way around if you were to shower whilst you're on the move or, or if you're on a site without any provision for a shower. Overhead um, air vents etc are exactly the same as I described before so you have the twofold where you have a fly net one way and you have blackout blinds the other and these are just a push button and a pull down so that will have the provision so if you obviously if it's height of summer 
and you don't want any creepy crawlies in your motorhome, that's your option. Let's plenty of air in and keeps all of the bugs out. Please make sure that these are push shut. So push that bar up past the, the button um, before you travel. And um, they're only plastic windows. If you were to travel with those protruding, um, I'd imagine once you get a little bit of speed up that they will probably just be saying goodbye to you somewhere on the motorway at 50 or 60 miles an hour. So same principle here, guys. Uh, push in, pull down, and then push back up to lock. As I say, just remember to shut those before you set off on your journeys. What I'm probably going to do is for those that hire with dogs, we will actually make a provision to put some non-slip matting across these to protect them. As you can see there, all the sofa areas are in pristine condition. Now this U-shape lounge area is particularly spacious, but obviously serves a secondary purpose in the sense that if you were to pull out the, the double bed slat in here, what that does is it gives you a complete double bed area. Let's see if I can show you that now, guys. And we've provided a Super King mattress topper and potentially if we've got the, the rubber mat in as well, that will make that even more comfortable for you guys. So that creates a, a pretty large sleeping area. So you've got a double bed within that vicinity, um, Super King size. And then up here, this is your electric drop down bed. So there'll be a, a ladder in the garage. And once you drop the bed down, so this will work regardless of whether, whether there's any power to the van. So this works off the, the cab 12 volt battery. And it's just a question of bringing that all the way down. Before you drop the bed down, just make sure the TV unit is all the way down because obviously that will, that's gonna impact on how far the bed can actually come down. So if I was to fully bring the bed down now, that's as far as it will go guys so it just it will stop and it flashes a green light so if you've got little ones who might be a bit fidgety or you're worried about them falling out this is adjustable you can put them to bed at night and then you can you can clip these on uh, tighten them up and obviously that will give the parents peace of mind i've probably gone a little bit too far with it in truth but if i was to tighten that up you get the point so you've got Pretty much a safe environment for your loved ones. I'll pop the bed back up and we can leave that attached. In here, we keep dog seat belts. So there'll be a couple of dog seat belts in there. So when you're traveling, your fairy friends will also be traveling in safety with you. Both the oven and the hob have a push in and then turn for the ignition. So if I show you the oven, if you press the switch with one hand and turn left for the grill, or right for the grill by the looks of it. So it's, you push the switch in, push the knob in and turn right for the grill, and push the switch in, push the knob in and turn left to light the oven. Hopefully that's clear. It's hard to do with one hand, guys. So ignition switch, Keep that depressed whilst you then push and turn the oven knob. And if you go to the right, it will put the grill on. And if you go to the left, it will put the oven on. Uh, and as you can see, it's, I um, don't think this one's been used very much. I think we have a lot of uh, dining in in this particular model. If you do cook, then there is a strong likelihood all of these will become extremely hot. What I'd advise is to not Put that down straight after you've cooked. Try and leave the glass hob cover up if you have been cooking just to allow the hob to cool down.
Another nice little feature on this particular model is a little table here. So if you're prepping, it just extends your kitchen area a little bit. A similar feature on this particular vehicle is the entry door. We have the sort of dual purpose mosquito slash fire net for the summer. So what you can do if you're, if you're dining, want to air your vehicle and you're dining outside, you can just put the fly net across. Don't forget to open it back up before you walk through it though. The other thing I wanted to show you quickly is window opening. So they are four catches, one, two, three, four, and then the windows are on gas struts. So they'll hold their weight. Something to bear in mind, they're just little plastic catches, these windows. Um, make sure you shut all the windows prior to setting off. Um, for the same reason I outlined before, plastic windows and high speed driving are not gonna mix very well, guys. So there are two control panels on the roller team. One directly as you come in through the motorhome door. So if I switch it on, what we've got is an on off button on the bottom right. Uh, and then if I start from top left, we've got the water pump. So if we put that on, you can hear the pump working and that will eventually go off. But obviously that needs to be on and active to be able to have a shower, use your heating, which obviously is going to draw hot water and also um, use the washing up for the sink, etc. So water pump, I'll switch it off for now so it doesn't drain out the noise. This is an external light. So that's directly above the door here. So if you're sat outside at night, you're welcome to switch that on. These are, these are the LED internal lights. Now they are controllable all around the vehicle. So there are separate light switches throughout, but also a handy point to mention, whoever uses the overhead bed can easily reach down and turn off all of the lights in one go at night. This one gives you a temperature gauge. On the right hand side, what we have is how much water we have on board. So S1 is clean water, the blue. If you press it again, R1 is grey water so at the minute it's showing we don't have any on um, that is because we have just come out of the winter season so we do not keep any water on but we would advise you guys also not to travel with any water it's just extra ballast that you won't need it'll make it less fuel efficient harder to drive and ultimately it's just a waste of, of your time and energy so I can show you how to fill the water, guys, when you when you come to rent the motorhome. And then you've got the two key features here. So you've got the habitation area of the vehicle. So that shows the battery life. And then you've got the, the leisure battery from the cab side of things. The habitation charge is topped up by the solar panels. When you get to a site and you hook up, that will also replenish it. The other major control point on the roller team is here. That's your home screen. It's just got the time on it. If you press that button there, what you'll see here is you've got four options and you can access those by just turning the dial back and forth for each. Useful thing to remember, guys, is anything under this line is ready to be set. Once you set it, it will jump up above the line which means it's on. So I'll show you what I mean. So at the minute, temperature of the van, so this is your gas heating, is off. So if you want it at 21, you can have it at 21. And it will be flashing because it's not at that desired temperature yet. So it will stop flashing when it gets to 21 degrees and you can see the gas kicked in there. So let's go across to this one. This is your water. So you've got various settings for your water. So Eco's fine. So if you, you know, you want to conserve your gas, Eco's fine. When you get up in the morning and you want a hot shower, you might want to just put it on boost. Um, and again, it will flash purely because um, it's going to need 10 minutes or so to, to get to the sort of temperature you want to have a nice hot shower. So I'm just going to go back and turn these off as I go. It's a hot day today and I don't really want to be sweating in the van. So all off at the top.
Now this one is the various power sources. So the one to remember guys is pretty much put it on EL2, which is electric. So when you're at a site and you're hooked up, EL2 is your preference. You don't need to be using any other one. I did hear from, um, from the dealer that somebody um, was drawing too much power on the site. So EL2 is purely electric. So that's when you're hooked up. If for some reason, you're finding that your you know things aren't working it's probably because you're trying to draw too much power you've got too many appliances on you might need to put it on mix two which would be a mix of gas and electric so because it's um because it's a smart meter this um the control panel will split probably something like the fridge um so that you can you, you know your power is not restricted and the last one is is To get your vents blowing so there's vents all the way around the van so pretty much you can you can have the temperature controlled as you'd like it um there you go guys that's the control panel and then one other point of note here we've only ever had this arise once and i was able to talk the client through it but under here we have fuse boxes and gas isolation valves so at the minute they're all they're all on anyway so it won't cause you guys an issue it's more for when we winterize the van but just as a point of note in case anything trips out there is a fuse box in there and that's underneath the oven um so yeah that is the roller team 747 lux model hope you've enjoyed the walk around video and i will obviously do a handover but this should make the brain dump a lot easier for you guys when you when you come to take the vehicle away